Welcome to your Property Rights Podcast, proudly brought to you by Private Property. If you're looking for expert legal answers to all your property-related questions, then stay tuned. It's lovely to welcome you back to another of your Property Rights Podcasts. Hello, I'm Paul Rotherham, and this show proudly brought to you by Private Property. Hello again, Silna. Hey, Paul. Always nice to be with you. It's always lovely to have you in studio. Thanks so much for being here and giving up your time. I know you are an important person and very busy as the MD of SSLR Incorporated Attorney Silna Stain is our expert property lawyer, specifically focusing on rentals and evictions, but we do cover all sorts of topics. So thank you, Silna, for your time. Only a pleasure. Today's topic, oh, I could get riled over this and worked up about this. Uh, A lovely question that's come in regarding a tree, and I think you'll know where I'm going with this. I'm going to read it as it is. My neighbors have a large tree on their property, writes this person. The branches of said tree extend into my garden, shedding leaves and debris into my swimming pool. This constantly clogs up my pool pump, which has needed multiple repairs as a result. And this also makes pool and garden maintenance an absolute nightmare, writes this person. When I tried to discuss this with my neighbor, I was told to, in quotes, just get a swimming pool cover. This is yet another expense I simply cannot afford. The question then for you today, Silna, on your property rights podcast is this. What can be done about this overhanging tree and the resultant damage and debris? And who is liable for the damages, including the damages to the pool pump? The person ends by saying, I'm losing my patience, which we don't want. Let's try and sort this out. How do we do it? Oh, well, neighbor law is uh, one of the most sensitive parts of the law that exist because we all know the relationship between neighbors are extremely sensitive uh, i remember in another episode we've discussed this as well yes that and was the barking dogs as i recall that's exactly and you specifically said remember not to get into a fight with somebody today who might have to help you out tomorrow and that is essentially what the thing is when it comes to neighbor law so in other parts of the law Um, It's quite simple to go to an attorney, do an aggressive letter and see if you can solve the problem. When it comes to neighbors, obviously you have to do it a bit more gentle and a bit more polite. Now in this context, it sounds like the listener already did that. Try to contact the the, um, neighbor, try to get the problem resolved and clearly uh, the neighbor is just saying, well, this is sort of a you problem. Now the good news, Paul, is luckily this is uh, our listener problem, problem and not the neighbor's problem. And what I'm saying luckily is now we can do something yes. about it. Give us the solution. Yeah. The solution is quite simple. A tree that is overhanging um, from one property onto the other property is the, the owner of the land where the roots are is the owner of the tree. But any branches that extends over your boundary line. So be it a wall, be it a fence, even be it just a boundary line, like in a a complex where you don't have (coughs) walls or something like that. A physical wall or a barrier, yes. Anything that's over your property line, so over your boundaries, you are allowed to trim that. But here's a fun fact, and I I think you're going to, I'm going to get a nice smile from your side on this one. Mm -hmm. Because... The Romans, when they they figured this part of the law out, obviously there weren't as many people as we currently have. There were much fewer people in societies. They were much closer and uh, and the law is, as much as it's developing, some parts of it are still pretty archaic and this is one of them. And this is why I think it's going to make you smile. Theoretically, the branches of the trees that you're now cutting off still belongs to the owner of the tree. I know where this is going. <laughs> so what, what happens is you're not actually entitled to the fruits of the tree. So say, for instance, this is a pomegranate tree. Look yes. at me now being very specific. It couldn't just be like an apple. A fruit now, tree, yes. <laughs> me being technical on, on fruits. But you're not allowed to take the fruits from the tree. Okay. So on the overhanging branches, you're not allowed to pick it. However... When it falls from the tree and it falls onto your earth, you can pick it up and it's yours now. But here's the fun part of the story. Strictly in law, if you are now cutting the trees 
through fruits or not um, from the neighbor's tree, you are in fact in law obliged, not just entitled, obliged to return. I love where this is going. <laughs> so not only do you get to trim the branches that have been annoying you and clogging your swimming pool, you actually get to chuck them over the wall. Uh, well, I wouldn't chuck it over the wall. <laughs> I might actually consider delivering it to the front door. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm not encouraging bad behavior yet. Sure. I'm just saying it's one of those parts of the law where you can now clearly hear, okay, this is the rule. But practically, this can blow up in your face immensely. Yes. If you have an overhanging tree... Guess what your neighbor's going to be doing at the first available opportunity if you've been rude and unneighborly. Trust me, they're going to reply in the same way. Exactly. And that's exactly why I think it's so relevant to know because from both sides of the fence, <laughs> I'm, I'm loving this question. I'm just ro rolling with him here. So on both sides of the fence, you have a potential benefit and a risk. Yes. But remember, this is how the law works. We have rights as well as obligations. Yep. So as the neighbor with the overhanging parts of the tree um, damaging your swimming pool. Remember, you have an obligation and a duty to do your own gardening. So to leave those branches to cause damage to your swimming pool, to your pool pump, to your creepy crawly, unfortunately, those damages must be carried by you because you had an obligation to trim and manage those branches on your side of the fence before it became a problem. Got you. And in fairness, if you run out every Saturday morning with a, a pruning scissor, look at me now. Shears, yes, gardening Thank shears you. or secateurs. <laughs> We're going to teach you a thing or two about gardening on this show, Silna. <laughs> See, now I, I know more about gardening. Thank you, Paul. And um, if you pull those shears out and you just keep it trimmed on yes. your side of the fence, it won't become a problem. So I definitely encourage our listeners to keep a close eye on neighbor trees and yes. when they start coming into your part of, um, onto your earth, trim them in time before it becomes a problem. If you buy a property and you had nothing to do with this problem now, so you buy the property and there are these branches hanging over, I would definitely encourage you to contact um, the neighboring party and say, listen, neighbor, I am a new person. I really don't want to start this relationship off on a bad foot. Let's do this. I want to trim them, but now it seems like the tree is going to fall over to my side. If I do this, can you and I come to an arrangement? We get a tree fellow, we, we prune him back properly so I don't cause damages by trimming the one half of the tree and now it's going to fall over the wall and now all drama is gonna gonna um, break loose and we're gonna read about this in Ice <laughs> Um so what I what I recommend there is at that point contact the neighbor see if you can come to some sort of solution if you can't you're entitled to trim I would then say just do a polite letter indemnifying yourself to say I've tried to communicate with you I'm now getting in tree fellas I will return the branches to your <laughs> doorstep politely as I should in terms of law but if it collapses because you didn't want to come in and assist with the pruning on your side of the wall I indemnify myself and should there be damage to the wall then or anything else please note that you will be responsible for those damages and that that person cannot be held accountable so I think to answer this question in short unfortunately the damages to the pool pump are going to be for your account a quick question relating to this. If said neighbor has a huge tree and that tree is well within their property, but on a windy day, there are leaves galore in autumn being blown across from their property into my pool. It's not through my negligence of not trimming the branches. It's far away. Would I have anything to say in that instance? Or is it just rotten luck that I happen to have purchased a home next to someone with a big tree. Is that just how it goes? It's it's rotten luck on your pool, but yay for your neighbor for providing that kind of oxygen to yep. you. And I let me just uh, state for the record, I'm one of those tree-hugging people. I've had neighbors who've moved in, and one of the first things that they've done is either prune or trim or cut down completely the trees. And for me, I can relate to this question. I really can, because I think we all love the, tr the, the trees. We love the bird life it attracts, especially in the suburbs. We love the shade that those trees provide during a hot summer's day. And I think ultimately, we just want to be able to get on with each other, but not go through the frustrations of having a swimming pool that is permanently clogged. So I do get that. Unfortunately, though, in this instance, 
the right thing to do is to trim the branches yourself, keep those nice and trimmed, and cut back with a proper pair of... Shears. Shears or secateurs. Very good. You've been listening. <laughs> and ultimately, for now, fix the pump yourself. Uh, it's water under the bridge, as it were. So thank you, Silna. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the question. It was a fun one. If you'd like to continue asking questions and commenting on this, you can join in the conversation. Or, hey, why don't you start a conversation on our Private Property Facebook page? We would love to hear from you, your thoughts regarding your property rights. After all, that's what this show is. It is your property rights podcast. I'm Paul Rotherham, and this show is proudly brought to you by Private Property. Your Property Rights Podcast is proudly brought to you by Private Property. Leave a comment or ask a question to join the conversation.